Electronic Music Podcast. Are we live? Here we are. We're live. No more cursing. <laughs> you can curse all you want. <laughs> nice. It's that kind of podcast. <laughs> uh, this is the voice of electronic music. P- potty cow. Potty mouth cast. Potty, potty cast. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, episode number 29 with Micah, it's Byrnes, right? Uh, Burns. 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 Okay. It's, okay. A, it's a potty. Oh, it's a potty, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice, man. How you doing? Good, good. I'm glad to be, could be a pot of this. Yeah. Pot, potty this. Potty this. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, uh, well, so this is a, a bit of a special edition because uh, we are here at uh, Great Northern, which uh, Micah is uh, co, uh, co-owner of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, as well as uh, Monarch. Yep. Nightclub. Um, and uh, the pawn shop. Uh, yeah, that's our new restaurant. Yeah, yeah new restaurant. Okay, um, I, that's something I really want to talk to you about because I love I love that place. Having uh, having visited it recently. Yeah. Um, so uh, we also uh, do a, a Monarch Beverage Catering, which I run, which is our oh, like yeah. uh, festival catering division, which we do oh, like yeah. bars for uh, festivals, mostly in California, but all over the country. That's right. I remember seeing that somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, good stuff. So what? Uh, just I guess give. Uh, I know a little bit uh, more about you than I think uh, you know some of the the viewers might. But uh, what uh, can you give us a little bit of an intro? Just how you kind of got into the music scene, how you got started. Oh, that is a long story. <laughs> well, we, got, we got a good. Well, how far back do you want to go? Um, well, I mean, before... Oh, sorry, yeah, I'm kind of close fine. to that. Yeah, yeah before uh, Monarch, I, uh, I, I mean, I kind of got into the rave scene a long time ago, pretty young, uh, working with uh, The Gathering, throwing, like, huge raves. And I was, uh, you know, I was a pastry chef for a long time in the city, and then I moved into working behind the bar because I got sick of cooking. <laughs> a lot of work, <laughs> not enough you. pay. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, yeah, not fun. Yeah. So, yeah, I, got, I started working behind the bar, and then I moved into uh, being a brand ambassador for Fredette Bronca and helped found a bunch of their national events, like the Barback Games and all that stuff. And then from there, I just kind of, like, had a, you know, a dream of opening a night, my own spot, my own bar, nightclub, and started writing a business plan with some friends, and here we are. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. That's Eight awesome. or nine years later. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, uh, so you kind of got started with uh, throwing events, but was, uh, were, I mean, I, I also saw that I think you're part of, uh, what is it, uh, Half of Silky Thunder? Is that, is yeah. you're a DJ <laughs> as well? Yeah, um, that's uh, that's my music project with uh, Tobin Ellsworth from Pink Mammoth. Nice. Um, I just, you know, it was one of those things where, I, I mean, I used to, play music a really long time ago and I kind of quit because there's just too, f- too many fucking DJs in this world yeah. and, and and it was you know and I was just busy focusing on other things and then uh, you know more recently I just kind of needed a creative outlet because I just feel like I was working all the time so mm-hmm. I needed something that was kind of more of a a fun thing for me you know and, absolutely yeah so that so basically I mean I was DJing on my own as brunch life and then me and Tobin just really got along and really liked playing together and I, I just kind of think it's more fun as a duo act uh you know and we 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 dj and we do like a little bit of live stuff with a npc and we're working on uh, uh creating our own music right now and it's just you know having somebody else to do music with i mean i meet a lot of djs and they're touring and it's kind of a lonely gig you know what I mean? Absolutely. yeah and it's like you know you're always on the road and it's just like you know playing with a really good friend it's it's just you know you, you can go to the bathroom or mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's kind of more of a hangout and it's fun and it's also creatively it's like you're constantly like playing off of each other and, yeah. and, and it makes it just more fun you right. know and for yeah. us it's like one of our goals as you know musicians or djs or whatever you want to call it is just to 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 have a really good time and make sure the audience is having a good time and yes. not take ourselves too seriously <laughs> yeah absolutely. Some, some djs are way too fucking serious yeah i know it's like you're just playing music you know? exactly like, exactly you might be really good at playing music but you're just playing music let's just have fun yeah you know? your job is to make people dance and have a good time and right. if you're not doing that you're not doing your job yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. right <laughs> lots, of, lots of lots of musicians or djs forget that they're yeah. like oh i have to do this serious this music that i planned out right. but it's like now your job is to make people fucking dance. Right, so, right. And if you, you look up and they're not dancing, you're fucking failing. I don't exactly, care who you right. Are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Serious Face. You know, yeah, playing music. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. Um, so, you know, uh, making that jump from uh, events, um, g- going into, you know, getting a, a you know, uh, opening a place like Great Northern. I mean, this place is, is fantastic. And I've, uh, I, I've been a patron here since, you know, it was uh, mighty. Um, and, you know, I'm also a big buff uh, into, like, the history of places. You yeah. know, I really enjoyed knowing, like, Halcyon was, uh, like, a transmission uh, warehouse, you know, and, mm-hmm. and then it turned into a live venue and then, you know, nightclub eventually. And I believe oh, it was a place, bunch of things before that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, sure. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I worked there when I actually, was it, was it, um, oh, no, that was Loft, or that was, uh, 
what was it for a while? It was a, uh, oh, that was audio. Audio was a sandwich place I worked at for one day. Was it really? Yeah, it was, called, oh, it was called like 20 Tank Brewery. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I like, I went in there and like tried out to cook sandwiches there or not to prepare sandwiches, but yeah. they're like, you're too experienced. Cause I would like just quit being a pastry <laughs> chef at a, at a fine dining restaurant. I just wanted a really easy job. And yeah. I went in there and did like one day and they're like, well, you're too experienced. I'm like, what do you mean I'm too experienced? They're like, what is that? You can't hire me? They're like, well, you're not going to like it. You're not going to stay here. I'm like, fine. That's the most bullshit excuse. Like, what yeah, it was, job, you know? yeah, it was, it wasn't a very good job, but yeah. I, was just, I just wanted something like less stressful. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, maybe a blessing uh, in disguise. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I remember, I remember when, uh, uh, Halcyon was, uh, it was transmission theater. Uh, it was like, mm. uh, actually I just really randomly met somebody in, Sacramento, who's friends with Brett, our manager here, and he he had met his wife at uh, the Flavor Group New Year's party from like ten or fifteen years earlier that I was actually at there. Holy cow! Uh, yeah, oh, that's crazy. But it used to have more to it. It used to be connected to that weird Philly cheesesteak spot in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, and Cali Eleven. I think it was all like kind of. One. I don't know if it was ever. I don't there was a door anyway. We had, there's a brick door that's been bricked yeah, off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it used to be part of that other spot, um, and then it was that that uh, Siberia. For a while, and it was a gay club for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Me and Monica almost Beatbox. took it over from Blast House. Oh, really? At one point, yeah. Oh, crazy. Yeah, Monica Bernstein. Yeah, yeah like yeah. a long time ago, we were like wow. looking at, at at taking over. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> great. So, um, w- w- you know, th- so I guess I was. Uh, this place was, I think, a train uh, depot, right? At some point, I think they, yeah, the train tracks did run through here. And like, if you, it's kind of crazy. If you look at the beams, they're like mm-hmm. full on. Each one's like a tree. Oh, yeah. And the entire ceiling has like four by eight beams that are stacked vertically. So like, yeah. I think they manufactured train parks or something really heavy upstairs. So like, that's the only reason it'd be that overbuilt. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting when we, when we took this place over, uh, uh, Dave from uh, Felix Lighting, uh, he's like one of our investors and like put our lighting rig in. And mm-hmm. one of the things he told me is like, I'm not going to be involved unless you tear everything off the ceiling and start fresh. And it was, it was, I think it was me and, and Brad and, and a couple of our other barbacks literally spent weeks like pulling like old cabling and old sound system wires and electrical and like literally mountains of shit of like 10 years of it being a club that just kept on being added to the ceiling. Yeah. Like stuff was still covered in chocolate syrup when I used to throw chocolate syrup <laughs> wrestling parties here. Oh it, my God. Cause it had been a club for, you know, 10 years and it was just, they yeah. kept, you know, they'd gone through three or four different sound systems. They just kept throwing more shit on top. So right. we took all that off and then we completely uh, uh, installed it ourselves, like uh, soundproofing uh, on every surface of the almost, you can't really yeah. s- tell on the walls because it's sure. behind curtains, but the entire ceiling is done. And it was the most itchiest, horrible fucking oh, thing ever. Yeah, that stuff is nasty. <laughs> yeah, we fiberglass. Were gonna, yeah, yeah, well, it's got it's made of fiberglass pop. We were gonna yeah. get it like that spray stuff done, but mm. then it was like really expensive, and it actually wasn't as good of a DB rating as the product we ended up using. Right, which is a product that's made for uh, quieting. Uh, uh, like air conditioning systems for high-rise buildings. Oh, interesting. So it's actually really uh, cost-effective, but it actually has yeah. one of the highest DB ratings. But huh. yeah, it was a big job, but it really, it kind of is nice now that you just look at the ceiling. And we also tore out a bunch of, you know, we've changed a ton of stuff with the AC and just has like a really clean ceiling. You know, you don't really see that, but it, 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 it makes it a lot easier. It just kind of disappears, but it like yeah. for a lighting standpoint and a production standpoint, it's like not having all that junk in your way and, Mm -hmm. you know, random stuff was really, really a nice fresh start. Right. Well, it's one of those things too. It's like, you don't really look up in the ceiling, but if there is a bunch of junk, you kind of look up there and you're like, oh, you know. Oh, I do. I'm always judging. Yeah, right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I go to a club and I'm like, oh God. Yeah. (laughs) What the fuck is all that shit? Hang on. Maybe it's like an OCD thing, but I'm like, oh God, I need to fix that. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Those cables aren't coiled. Those fucking lazy fucks. Oh man. Uh, yeah, cable, cable, cable coiling, a good cable coiling job will, uh, that's how you get, get to my heart, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if people get lazy sometimes, right. some people do it right, you never yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> so how did, uh, I mean, you know, when th- this place was mighty, it was, it was great. It was a little bit more kind of the, the old school warehousey vibe, you know, it wasn't quite as, as fantastic uh, as, as it is now. But like, how did you guys decide on the kind of art deco style that you've gone with, you know, that you can see here in the, the bar and, and it's pretty much, you know, everywhere. It's in the mirrors, it's in the sconces and all that. Yeah, so we were, you know, we, we, we originally built Monarch uh, working with uh, Scene 2, or they're called One Hat, One Hammer now, their set design company. Mm-hmm. And uh, we came up with kind of concept, came to them, which was like an Art Nouveau, steampunky. We had another uh, designer that kind of helped us out with that, uh, coming up with that concept. We went to them and they crushed it, and it, you know, and they 
it was their first like uh, like permanent project. They did a bunch of trade shows and like movie sets, and like they really put a lot into it and kind of you know probably lost money on it. <laughs> you know, they did it for really inexpensive, and we we you know we did all the work like really quickly and really cheaply there, mm. and it turned the result was amazing, and you know. But then when we were going for this project, I was like looking around, I'm like, you know, everywhere has that kind of rustic, low wattage bulb. It's like even Starbucks has it now. We need to come up with something completely different that yeah. nobody's done. And, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, you know, the real height of just design in ever was, you know, was the Art Deco era. Uh, that's like where it kind of reached a pinnacle of, you know, just how beautiful design was. And it was one of those things where people did you know, don't really do it because it's just not cost effective because mm. uh, it's just really expensive. That's why they don't even design or build shit like that anymore because it's the materials used and the time of labor and how intricate shit Too was. Too expensive, yeah. Yeah, it's really expensive. And it was like yeah. it was like this real height of, of, you know, people really being into design. And after that, it went to, you know, all kinds of weird, cheesy designs. And stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we were like, okay, well, the technology has gotten there, you know, with computer design and, and, and CNC routers like that to where we can recreate some of these like lost arts uh, that you know, because it's like you, before, it's like you, you want to build a Victorian building, you can't find the the weird dude that spent 100 years training to make Victorian buildings. He doesn't fucking exist anymore. Right, yeah. <laughs> and he, he, so, but now because of the where technology's at, you know, you can you can recreate that stuff by modeling a computer and 3D mm. printing it, or mm -hmm. you know, di or different. There's ways to do it, and it's still expensive, but it's not it's not impossible anymore. Right. Uh, uh, because adversary. So. With this place, uh, we were, you know, we decided to work with the same company again, um, uh, One Hat, One Hand, and I came up with an idea. I'm like, hey, why don't we do, I, I just came up with this really fun phrase of future deco. Hmm. So it's kind of a, a, you know, art deco with like future technologies. And so we have like, you know, it's a very art deco. Like this piece behind us is like this crazy art deco, uh, you know, mural, but it has an LED screen, screen behind it. And so it's like a, you know, interesting lighting techniques and stuff I can do. Yeah. So it's a, it's a blend of, of you know, it's future deco. Right, right. <laughs> and same thing with our whole projection mapped wall. It's like, you know, yeah. going for art deco with a future twist, basically. Right. It is. It's kind of the, I mean, the, the, you guys can't see it on the camera. Um, maybe next time we'll point it that way. But the, uh, uh, it's, it's got these kind of like clouds and uh, kind of the same uh, kind of a, like a arch. And it's kind of white and it doesn't look like much now, but I've been here at night and when you see it, it's like, it looks alive because the, the projection is kind of perfectly mapped to it and it's kind of moving and evolving, kind of almost to where you like, you don't really know if it's being projection mapped or not, and then you look at it and it's kind of moving. You're like, oh wow, that's, that's yeah, insane. That, yeah, that was the, you know, the goal with that whole wall was just to make something that you really didn't know what was going in when you, yeah. well, when you saw it. And like, for me, like I worked with Blast House for years and I mm -hmm. toured with Almond Tobin helping build his whole like ISAM Live Cube thing. I was like on the production team for that. And like, you know, I, so I was like, I have really high standards when it comes to lighting and projections and weird shit. And mm -hmm. so this thing, we just took it, like we basically started from the ground up. They designed this whole wall and it was literally, each piece was, was custom cut, you know, from a computer model. And then they took that model and sent it to uh, our, our, our visuals guy named Mark Johns, who then created all these 3D effects that go over it. And then we also had uh, uh, Sam Flores and, and Ronnie Butters, which are like famous uh, uh, muralists, come and spray paint and shade all the shapes. So it's actually three different things going on. It has, it, and lots of people don't even know that unless you physically go up and touch it because you're like, what the fuck is going on? Because right. it has like three or four inches of, of physical relief from the different pieces. Then it's been spray painted and shaded, so it has like a fake relief from that. And then it's projection mapped over the top of, so right. but using the actual 3D model, so all the lines are perfectly exact. Wow. Uh, so it has a lot going on. That, <laughs> yeah. That's how it gets that effect where you're like, I totally sober, but I think I had acid when I'm looking at this thing. Right. It's yeah. So fucking weird. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it it kind of reminds me of uh, like music production. Like a lot of times when you when you just like take like some preset from a synth or something and you just use it, it's like okay, you can kind of like mentally you can you can piece together where that sound is coming from. But once you start like chopping things up and you add effects and then you print that to audio and then you keep going from there, it's like things start to get weird and you don't really you, you can't reverse engineer it. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's how some of the best stuff is. is yeah. Where you just can't you, you you don't know what to make of it. You know. Yeah, that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. a good analogy. Yeah. For it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's pretty fun. And, and what's cool about it is we also, you know, because we have it kind of at this point, we have it like, you know, a bunch of like set up like effects that use the mapping. Then we can also mm. invite in other visual artists to come in and, and work within that system. Oh, nice. Or we can even like, we'll have like, you know, we'll have like big bands and then we can actually like do live video and, and incorporate it into it. Oh, and so, yeah. and it's really fun too. Like we, you know, and, and with, the, within a little bit of time, like, 
you know, we had like some, you know, like the invisible scratch wiggles coming in here and like Mark Johns created this whole visual show that was all like, you know, 90s break dancers and b-boys and like fun stuff. So we like a lot of times like the visuals go actually theme to whatever the party is. Yeah. And, and it's actually really even more interesting because Mark Johns, our main visuals guy, has moved to Portland, Oregon. So he actually literally does visuals uh, uh, from Portland, Oregon. Oh, wow. So he, yeah, so we have it set up <laughs> where he has a webcam and he actually uh, uh, comes in w over TeamViewer and controls our server here. Holy cow. From Oregon, yeah. At first we were, we, were, <laughs> we were like so pissed when he was moving, but he like figured out how to do it remotely <laughs> oh my god that's yeah we amazing. have some local people as well but like for the bigger events he actually like yeah so telepresence he's, he's at home sitting there like in his pajamas at his computer i picture him <laughs> like yeah no pants on like <laughs> with one of his kids and a beer right like, yeah. yeah as he should hopefully be hopefully yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he, he's the, he's the best i've ever found in the business wow. so it's, it's great to have him still be able to do it yeah that's amazing too that you you were kind of on the well very much in the the production side of things with amon tobin and that sort of thing and so i mean you know you really like I feel like you, you understand down to the nitty gritty as to what goes into a lot of this stuff. Which, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the thing is here, it's like, you know, a lot of clubs don't go to the level that we go to. Or actually, well, none of them do. Like, we're the only mm. we're the only nightclub with an aerial circus program. Mm. We're the only nightclub that, that, you know, does constantly updated new visuals and all this stuff. It's like, we, so we, 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 we take this shit really seriously. And for us, it's like, we're not trying to compete with the local nightclubs. We're trying to compete with nightclubs in the entire world. Yeah. And so, you know, sometimes like, you know, it costs us more and we would probably be making more money here if we weren't doing this stuff. But it's like, we, you know, we, we take pride in, in everything here being next level and, yeah. and above and beyond and, you know, keeping on our whole aerial circus team and, 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 you know, doing like just, just different installations and, mm -hmm. and, and fun shit all the time. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, San Francisco is definitely, uh, you know, uh, nothing to scoff at. You know what I mean? We have one of the, in my opinion, one of the best music scenes in the world, you know. Yeah, it's every, every weekend here is York. like a festival. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, it's pretty yeah. nuts. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I, I lived up in uh, Sacramento for all, all of a year, and um, it, it's a fine place. But, you know, it just, it really struck me how... Up there, you know, the the highlight of the year was uh, was Justin Martin came up and p played one of the small nightclubs up there, which is really Woo. more of like a lounge. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and when, for me, I was stoked because that was like, wow, you know. Uh, but they're then, doing they're doing some good stuff up there. We just went up yeah. there and played. Uh, it was the uh, Monkey. Oh shoot, what was it called? Uh, Banana Banana Sundays at the Monkey Lounge. Oh, I think I've heard of that. Yeah, it was like yeah. a brunch party, and these like kind of younger kids are promoting events up there, and they're really doing they're doing block parties, and yeah. they're starting to build a new scene up in Sacramento. But it was a it was a really fun event. I yeah. really, I really enjoyed it actually. I was yeah. surprised. Yeah, they also uh, they're, they're doing these uh, street party things. Yeah, 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 Bruno, yeah. Bruno Furlan at a street party. Yeah. Um, they, they put it outside, you know, it's in front of, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but some of these restaurants and they block off the street, kind of like you guys do here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a blast. But I guess, more, you know, what my point was is, you know, on a, on a, a, a Thursday night, you could, you know, see Skrillex or, or, you know, some, like some big name here just in San yeah, Francisco. It's, it's just, always, it's crazy. Well, yeah. you know, it's, it's actually kind of a, it's almost a shame at this point too. I mean, it's great for the customers, but at the point it's not really sustainable for the nightclubs because right now there's mm -hmm. just there's way more events going on here than the, the market actually supports. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, because, and so it's like, and then the agents are like charging more and more prices and then there's nightclubs overpaying for stuff cause it's so competitive. And mm -hmm. it's just like, it, it's, it's to be a night, just a nightclub in the city is not actually really financial uh, viable at this point. Like yeah. if we weren't doing our beverage catering and our private events like that, like, our nightclubs will go out of business. Right. right <laughs> and, yeah. and, and it's sad that, you know, there's just, but it's, it's, it, I don't know. And this market is at that point where it's just gotten so competitive and there's so many different people doing it and it's great for the customers, but actually not always. Sometimes like, sometimes like there'll be a really big show, but because there's a bunch of these other events happening, it like won't be that busy, you know? Mm, right, <laughs> so there's right, a, yeah, yeah. it's like, it's kind of sad too for the, yeah. I mean, it works out in most of the time in the customer's favor, but sometimes it is, it doesn't work out because it's, you know, these show, these smaller shows aren't getting the appreciation because there's this, or even a really huge artist isn't because there's four other huge artists playing the same At night. At the same time, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I, especially on 11th Street at Halcyon, I mean, you know, I see a, I'm actually kind of constantly surprised because we're literally right next door to audio. And then, you know, there's Bergerac, which is a lounge, and then DNA, and you've got, uh, you know, uh, Slams, Slims and all, all that, shit, yeah. and Butter. And it's like, they're still, I mean, we, we're never really hurting for people, you know? And yeah. it's kind of amazing <laughs> that, like, San Francisco, I, I, I completely get what yeah, you mean. Yeah, but I mean, I, I look at a club like Halcyon, and I, I mean, not to, to, you know, sling mud or anything, but it's like, mm -hmm. you know, they're booking artists and paying more than the room can sustain. Oh, uh, yeah. That, yeah, so they're like, they're, you know, constantly losing money. 
and it kind of makes it you know harder for some of the other clubs that that don't have that kind of money to spend. Yeah, totally, yeah, totally, <laughs> and, totally, and it kind of yeah. kind of messes up the market. And so like, an agent's like, oh, I got this money there. I need mm-hmm. to get this money every time I come back to San Francisco. Right, right, right. When it's like you know, I feel like clubs should should only pay for an artist what they're they're what they're, they're worth. Well, not what they're worth, but what the room can sustain. And, oh, and, yeah, and, for and, sure. And agents realize that when they, you know, when they go to Wyoming, they charge this price, or when they go here, but you know, and it's it's like okay, if a room holds this many people and the tickets are twenty dollars, you shouldn't pay more than the room could hold. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right. that's just straight up math. And right. like some of these clubs, because they're so competitive, and they, you know, maybe they have extra money from bigger investors or whatever it is, or they're just really trying to like stick it to their neighbor, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. so competitive here, people will overpay, which I think in the long run is, you know, ruining the whole longevity of the electronic music industry in general. Right, right. Yeah, it's, I mean, I and guess- festivals it, and things like that too. It's like yeah. some of these bigger festivals, they have these huge investors and, you know, who knows what the money's coming from and they're just like overpaying for shit all the time. And it's like, eventually it's like, and it's already happening in Europe. It's kind of like a whole crash happening where like promoters right. can't sustain themselves and clubs are closing right. and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's because of this, you know, over competitive market and like, and, and money is being put in and, and all kinds of weird shit that's artificially inflating the prices of the artists pay. Sure. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the, the gentrification of San Francisco. You know what I mean? In, yeah. in a lot of ways, you know, when you're paying- uh, Gentrification you know. of nightclubs. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, that's interesting. So, um, I mean, what, what are some other things that you kind of, uh, you know, when you, when you step into a market like that, uh, opening a place like this, what are some of the things that you really want to make sure you nail so that you can kind of ensure that uh, you have a good chance? I mean, obviously, you know, the, the, oh, the man, book, the just book. do it somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, at this That's point fair. there's, it, it's, it's just, there's, there's, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, there's too many venues for the size of the city at this point. Yeah. Right, and, and right. we're, I mean, we're making it work, but it's like, people are like, oh, you guys are crushing all the time. I'm like, yeah, we're fucking busy a lot, but it's like, we really ha- are struggling and really have to do all these other things to keep, to keep the doors open. Mm-hmm. And, you know, unless something changes, like we get our 4 a.m. drinking happening or like, you know, and we're doing more and more of these block parties and bigger events, but like, yeah, the, the, and also it's just, you know, the city's getting, people think it's getting expensive to live here. It's getting even 10 times more expensive to do business here. Oh yeah. Yeah. We have right. things like, you know, the health CSF and minimum wage going up and mm-hmm. it's, it. And it's one of those things where, like, I'm all about a high minimum wage, but for tipped employees, it's kind of a, a catch-22 because it's like, you know, my bartenders, I, I love them to death, but they're, you know, they're making $40 an hour in tips, and then they're also getting paid, you know, uh, an extra, you know, now in the last two years, it's got minimum wage has gone up by $2. Right, <laughs> it's, like, right. it's like, I'm like, <laughs> come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's great, but it's like, and that makes sense if that's all you're making is that, you know, that $16 an hour, like, working yeah. at, at, at a coffee shop or something, but when you're walking with all these tips like my bartenders make more than i do a lot right. of the times right. yeah. <laughs> they also probably you know spend more hours working but still sure. it's yeah it's yeah. it's it's a it's a weird market it's really hard and it's it's a city is just charging businesses to death not mm-hmm. well not not bigger business obviously like yeah. the twitters of the world are getting huge tax breaks and free right. uh, everything whereas you know smaller business like us like you know taxes rise fucking uh, you know everything is just going up and up and up and yeah. we you know we're we've reached a point where we can't really charge that much more for drinks and that's what we sell our money make our money on right. and people are also being more health conscious they're drinking less they're spending more time at festivals and other experiences and stuff so it's like mm-hmm. it's actually really really a tough market right now for nightclubs in yeah. general and, and not just in san francisco it, it's happening across the globe but yeah. san francisco is especially a tough one right now as far yeah. as markets go where do, where do you see i mean do you see like a a, a breaking point you know as far as uh you know oh i I see clubs breaking all the time. Like <laughs> literally, I mean, look, look around. I mean, we have some of our biggest nightclubs closing. Well, I guess I mean more like, you know, at what point does the city kind of look around and be like, hey, this isn't sustainable. Maybe we need to start kind of, you know, dialing some of these things back. Well, the, you know? the city in general has been making some changes that slowly, I mean, there's parts of the city that, that enjoy nightlife and parts of them that don't as far as like, you know, uh, I'm talking about government agencies. Like they're, mm-hmm. they're changing laws. They have a new, they have that new one they just did about, um, you know, the sound stuff. Like if you build an apartment building next to a, a venue, you have to properly soundproof it. And all. Like, so they, yeah. they are trying to save nightlife and culture. And they do realize, you know, there was a economic study done back in, I think it was 2005, that, that basically they figured out that the nightlife industry was like $5 billion. And so they, they, they figured out that the nightclub or, you know, the nightlife industry helps propel the whole, you know, what makes people come visit the city and, yeah. and all kinds of ancillary markets and things are changing slowly and, and, and they do uh, you know appreciate it. But 
at the same time too, you know, for every agency that, that's trying to help, there's like 10 other ones that are just totally screwing you over. Like right, right. now, a perfect example, I have the uh, San Francisco planning department uh, freaking out saying that uh, the pawn shop, which is a secret passageway entrance restaurant through a faux pawn shop, that the secret passageway entrance has to be see-through. <laughs> And I'm like, it's the dumbest, like, and, and, and here's the thing. They already approved the plans. We built the thing. And then now they're like, oh, no, we changed our mind because somebody else uh, took oh over this God. case. And you have to make this whole wall see through. I'm like, what part of secret passageway <laughs> don't you fucking understand? Right. It's like, it's just a war on fun uh, for some of these people yeah. that, that sit at these desks. And, and also it's just like, you know, I found that like a lot of, and I, I'm all about public safety. I'm all about fire safety and all this mm -hmm. stuff. But like some of these, like, you know, different agencies, it's like, you know, there's all these different people that have to sign off on all these different things. You have to go to all these different things to build or change mm -hmm. anything. And a lot of them, they're like, they have to find something wrong mm -hmm. with a piece of paper on their desk or there's no reason for their job to exist. Right. It's like, like the only thing I can think of. Like you know they, what I mean? They couldn't just look at it and be like, yeah, it looks good and sign off. You know, like they oh, have to the, find well, then, something. Then why, why do they, what, why, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then why, why can't we just fire for? them? Yeah, right, yeah, I could just, <laughs> I could sign, yeah. So wow. and it's, it's, it's infinitely frustrating that, and, and it's, and it's, it is taking the toll. There are, you know, and it's not, and, and then there's landlords pushing people out, and, but it's, it's, you know, the city, uh, I really think there needs to come a reckoning uh, where the city f really figures it out and starts to streamline things and make it easier to do business in the city. Because mm. not, not just for, for nightlifes, but for any business in the city, it's literally one of the most difficult cities in the world to start a small business. Yeah. And it's just so many hoops to jump through, so much bureaucracy, and some of it doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. I mean, why, like, why would they need the, the secret passageway to be clear? Exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's a law about beautifying the neighborhood, but you know, here oh, we are yeah. on, and, 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 and here we are literally on demographically one of the worst blocks in America, right. literally with all the SROs and everything. It is the worst corner. And you know, businesses have been failing there for 35 years. And we're the first yeah. business that's able to stay there. And we're, you know, we've been doing all this stuff to beautify the neighborhood and we're, we're taking over this whole building. But I mean, like, if I have to make that secret passageway see through, maybe I'll just close the pawn shop. Yeah, and maybe I'll right. just go do business in Sacramento right. because yeah. I mean, because they want me there. You know, yeah. like, I look like I look at like a progressive city like Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was out there for movement, and they it, it the downtown area is fucking beautiful. I was expecting mm -hmm. it to be like New Jack City, like cars on fire. You go there, and it is it is so nice, and like there's you know the the, the homeless situation is super cleaned up. Like you go like every park has like a beer garden in it, and like mm -hmm. outdoor vending. It's like it's because the city wants new business and they're mm. trying to foster and help that type of thing here it's like completely opposite and there are agencies like the entertainment commission so like that that tries to help but it's like the other red tape that you deal with is is staggering and it's right. and i and they don't realize that they're literally going and they already are they're going to like they're they're inhibiting the growth of the city they're inhibiting what makes san francisco amazing and it and, it, and it's gonna it's gonna come crashing down eventually like it's right. gonna get to the point where you know, all these businesses start closing and then all this money and all these people moving here aren't going to want to live here anymore. Yeah. It's not going to be fun anymore. Right, yeah. No, it's like the, yeah, like the tech thing, all these people moving in and they, you know, I mean, uh, poor, um, uh, what's the, where they had dirty bird quarterlies. Um, I'm blanking on it. Um, Oh, mezzanine. Mezzanine. Yeah, mezzanine has having to, having to close because they're the, the owner wants to put in, uh, condos there. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that's my fear is that more of that's going to start happening. And then just like you said, there's going to be no more nightlife. But that's, well, that's, like, one of, that's one of the problems, you know, the landlord displacement. But I'm finding, you know, that, and that hap that's happening a lot for a lot of places. But also just the, the cost of doing business with mm -hmm. the actual city is so staggering that right. it's, it's almost impossible to be profitable in this city yeah. with, with traditional business models. I didn't even, that's not something I was even privy to because I obviously don't, you know, you're, you're uh, yeah. having to deal with that, but that's, uh, that's fascinating. You yeah, know, and when we first started even, I mean, this, is, this has changed in the last like 10 years. Like when we first yeah. started, you know, it was, it was enough just to get your club busy all the time. Now yeah. it's like you constantly have to be cutting costs and like, dealing with all this little tedious shit and then just also just, you know, dealing with, you know, different agencies conflicting each other. Like right. I, ha I had, you know, I have, I have the Historic Preservation Society telling me, you know, you cannot change a single brick on the front of this building. Oh and, and then I have the planning department saying, you need to change all this stuff. And I'm like, well, the front of this building is cinder blocks. There's nothing historic about it. And like, <laughs> yeah. they're like, well, if you, if you move the door, then you're going to have to put back all, uh, you know, all of original bricks. I'm like, well, how am I going to find hundred year old bricks? First of all, they don't exist. Like, it's just like, you know, and, and, and it's, I don't know where it's like people that got like picked on in high school that just mm. have a little bit of power and they freak out. And it's like, yeah. 
Uh, and it, 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 it's so weird. And it's, yeah. and it's, it really just sucks that you can't just reason with these kind of people like face to face. And I, you know, we've even gone through the proper steps, like gone and talking to our, talk to our supervisor and had our supervisor go down to the planning department and try and fix this type of thing. And, and these people are just like, no, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, I mean, I, I've even, I've even, and I even hear like, okay, well, if you do try and go above them and like talk to the mayor or something, then they're going to be vindictive and screw you mm -hmm. later on. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, it's really exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. is. It really is. And it, it sucks that as a nightclub owner, this is the sh type of stuff I have to think about constantly instead of thinking about like programming and, and making my venue fun and creating great experiences for people. It's like, I'm, yeah. at this point, I'm literally so buried in these headaches. It's like, heart, it's stifling my ability to be a creative, you know? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a place, uh, I used to live in Berkeley, and there's a place called uh, Urban Ore. And yep. that's kind of what their their uh, people frequent. That I mean, it's full of you know old radios and old you know this and that and toasters and vinyl and stuff. But they have a huge section that's just old doors and windows and stuff like that. So yeah. that p when people want to do something like you were just talking about, and they're like, "Hey, you need to have the original like molding around your door so it doesn't look brand new," they can do that. And it's just like <laughs> it just seems silly. Like I, I get it. I mean, you drive through Berkeley and it, it's beautiful. And they've kind of held on to that old school nostalgia. But, I mean, when does that stop? You know, I mean, like 200 years, 400 years, like, you well, know. What, what I, what my, my real problem with it is that some of these city agencies have no checks and balances. They have mm -hmm. no other agency that can supersede them. They have nobody, no appeals process. It's just a no. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, 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 like, you know, with this planning department thing with the pawn shop, you know, they came in, they approved our plans, yeah. you know, we built it and now they're changing their mind and they're actually holding up a whole other project we're building next door. So they're costing us, you know, 10 or $15,000 a month on, on paying rent on a project that we're not able to start on oh. that is completely separate address. Right. And so, and they know they have us in this bind and it's just like, and so you're going to completely ruin one of our businesses and almost put us out of business waiting to do this other business because uh, uh, of something you already approved and now you changed your mind. Right. And, and then we go to the person's boss and they're like, oh, you were right. And then they go to this person and they still can't change it. Cause they, <laughs> it's, it's, and it's like, it just sucks that there's no, no city agency that, that actually can supersede the planning department or can mm. actually, or there's no way to appeal a decision, you know? And it's like yeah. a lot of these agencies have complete to tail and tail and control outside of any other regulatory agency, except for, you know, I mean, we could probably go and appeal it with something that could take us a year, but then we'll be out of business. Right. And right. It's, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I'm sorry to go off on a whole no, tangent no, no, no. about this, but this is like the shit I'm dealing I with right I now. I love the tangents. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then of course, someone else, you know, uh, if, if you weren't able to carry out with that business because of those reasons, someone else would try and they'd probably go, you know, fall into the same trap as, as before. And that's and why you know, well, that's why two out of three, uh, uh, you know, new businesses fail in the city. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it's not insane. more. Yeah. yeah. Well, so what do you, um, you and, and that's the thing is it's, yeah. and it's also, it's in nobody's interest and, and nobody's benefit to, to have businesses that fail. Right. And it, it's just a big waste of time and money and effort and, and drain on, on, you know, the city's resources and everybody's mm -hmm. resources. And it's like, these agencies don't understand that, that, you know, when they, uh, you know, when they take, you know, an extra four or five months, and that's the other thing too, the approvals processes for, or processes for, for building something new, like typically every project here is held up an average of one to two years. Wow. That's fucking insane. Oh my God. And, and imagine when you're paying Paying premium, you know, three, four dollars a square foot rent, yeah. waiting for for literally. Oh, sorry, uh, that person's on vacation. They'll get back to you in three months. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, we don't have time to come God. by today. Yeah. We'll be there in three months. Like horseshit, like that. And it's like, and we we have to pay the price. There's no, and yeah. there's no regulatory agency that that checks these agencies on their performance. Right. And, and, yeah, right. and, then, and, it, and technically, you know what? They're, they're supposed to be working for us. They're, right. they're, they're government employees. Yeah, you know? right, right. We pay their salary, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, why? and they're, getting, they're getting paid and they're just like, and, uh, I'm gonna get to it when I'm gonna get to it and that sort of thing. Yeah, so. and they don't, they don't think about the, and they have no like human factor of, you know, am I, am I ruining an amazing business that, yeah. that, that's really beautifying one of the worst neighborhoods in America? That, are right. they thinking about that? No, they don't care. <laughs> They're yeah. just like, oh, my paper's not stamped in here. And also, like, the other thing, too, is some of these laws are so convoluted and ancient and literally hundreds of years old, and there's so many different ways to interpret them that, you know, these planning departments can, can come up with whatever the fuck they want. And it's like, you know, they're like, well, nope, this is the interpretation of the law. I'm like, yeah, but the guy before you said, and it's like <laughs> luck of the draw, whether you get the nice fucking oh, person geez. or you get the total asshole. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's like, 
you know, any business in the city, the health department could shut down in five minutes if they want to. They can, right. you know, they're, they're, and there's, cause there's so many weird, or, or, you know, there's so many different weird laws. Like, all of North Beach should be fucking shut down for health code <laughs> violation. Those fucking restaurants are hundreds of years old. Right, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? They're fucked. Yeah. And, but it's like, and it's, 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 you know what it is? The truth is, I mean, this sounds pretty messed up, but San Francisco is a port city. Port cities are typically super corrupt, you know, yeah. all the way from the top to bottom. It's, 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 you know, it's been corrupt since the, you know, the 1800s right. and it continues to be so, but it, it's, it pisses me off when, you know, super corrupt government agencies and shit where I see weird shit happening all the time that they're also super sticklers about rules. You make be one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, you guys... <laughs> I don't know. Be super corrupt so we can call you out on it or like, you know, be, be straight and narrow, you know? Yeah. But yeah. it's like, you know, it's, it, 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 the truth is it, 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 it should be easier and it should be yeah. easier for, for small businesses. They should be fostering entrepreneurs. They should be, you know, as opposed to giving tax breaks to giant companies that come in here that mm -hmm. don't do anything to better the neighborhood that bust their people in and out. They should be looking to help the small business uh, thing and, st and streamline the process it is to open a small business. Like, yeah. how can anybody open a small business here when you're going to end up paying, you know, $120,000 in rent waiting to open to get permits? Right. Like, you know what I mean? That's right. just the average person doesn't have that. Or, or, you know, people fail all the time. Like, a lot of businesses yeah. don't even get to opening because they, they get stuck in this regulatory With permits boggle. And yeah, 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 debacle. So what, uh, in your opinion, what's, what is, like, relief? Like, you know, what, what, would, what would be short-term or long-term, uh, like, relief from that situation? I mean, I, I mean I, people have tried to do it in the past, but I think there should be a, a government agency that is literally, their entire thing is to streamline and help the process. And there are mm. some agencies like that, but they don't have any power. Yeah. Um, there needs to be something that's directly oversaw, you know, the, the mayor directly oversees and, you know, and has the power to, 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 you know, advocate for them and actually make some real changes or make some real decisions or be able to supersede bad decisions on mm. different planning agencies or like, or call them out for, for dragging their feet yeah. or things like that. Or also, you know, one office where you can go to deal with all this shit. The fact that, that just to do anything, I have to go to 10 different offices in different parts of the city. It doesn't make any sense. Right. <laughs> it's like, you go here, get this, go here, get this. And it's like, and all that stuff isn't written down anywhere. You, oh, you got to figure it out. Oh, it's like, yeah, yeah it's, it sucks. Not to mention their websites look like they're from 1998. All of that. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, and, it, and it sucks because, you know, this city is supposed to be this big progressive city that's moving forward. It's, it's, it's actually one of the hardest and one of the worst to get to navigate mm. this, this bureaucratic nonsense. Right. Whereas, you know, there's lots of other cities. And I see a city like Toilet as an example. It's, you know, shit was so crumbled and so fucked there. They rebuilt on top of that. You know, that yeah. something, you know, similar things are happening like down in Palm Springs where they literally fired the entire government because they were caught like doing all this crazy scandals with, 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 you know, like getting paid off for building permits stuff. So now they have an all young new chamber of commerce and they're just like making decisions and making shit happen. Imagine and, like, that. Yeah. It's, yeah. It'd be amazing. It'd be <laughs> amazing. Yeah. That's, and how, it's, that's how I feel about the, the, the actual government too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So oh, many, well that's a whole so other can of worms. I don't even want to phones. bring that. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> they don't, they don't want anything to change yeah. because they're lining their pockets. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I do feel like, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's a hundred years from now or 200 years but uh, it, it, whenever whenever all of that all of those positions are refilled with people that are of the internet age it's going to be I, I i hope and i'm, I'm optimistic that it's going to be a lot better yeah you and i can I mean? see that and that well that's that's what i'm saying that's where i'll like you know when these other places completely crumble and they build yeah. from scratch that's what happens and yeah. then they they get a progressive government that's that's into change that's into actually building things as opposed yeah. to into curmudgeonly holding on to, to dated ideals that that, right. that that stagnate the entire system. Yeah. But let's talk about some fun stuff. Let's talk about some fun stuff. Yeah. Let's see. Well, so, uh, you, you touched on um, I, I, fun. I don't know, but you, you touched on um, the drinking time to four a.m. And I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Like, well, how do you feel about that if it's going to be if it's going to be passed? Oh, it'll definitely be passed. So yeah. the last well, the last time it actually was passed. Um, yeah. And then uh, uh, was it Willie Brown? Some yeah, I think it was Willie Brown in his last last act of office mm -hmm. uh, decided to veto it. Right. So it passed the popular vote. Everybody was into it. And then he said no. <laughs> yeah. So th this time it'll, it'll be uh, uh, Gavin will have that ultimate choice. And yeah. he originally backed the bill when it first came out a long time ago. So I, yeah. I, if, if, 
it, it, it should go through. But that doesn't mean it's still going to take a couple of years. Uh, yeah. and, and, and the truth is, like, that, that would be a big change, a positive change for the nightlife industry, mm -hmm. especially for travelers. There's people that come here from all over the world, and they're like, oh, we want to go out to nightclubs. And they're like, they look at me like I'm insane when I tell them they have to they have to take their drink away too and they're like what do you mean right, <laughs> like, yeah. they're like people from Europe people from New York and it's like we're supposed to be this big international like you know nightlife city and 2 a.m. drinking is just right. not a one size fit all you know option and yeah. it's and, and truthfully cities should be able to decide for themselves yes. if we can decide whether we want to let people smoke pot or eat mushrooms we should be able to decide when they can drink till yes. there and and you know and and then you know some more conservative other cities they can decide they want it to be 1 a.m. I don't fucking sure. care sure. but it, it shouldn't be a, it's not a statewide thing and it, yeah. it shouldn't be it should be decided by each city and that and that that's that's you know that's originally they were doing it statewide but like that's how that's why this law has gained the popular appeal is because mm. It, it is a letting you know different city municipalities decide for themselves, and I think yeah. I think that's going to be amazing. Yeah. And they're not just—it's not just going to be people don't realize it's not just going to be every bar. No, it's yeah. going to be you know places like us that are that have you know have had 4 a.m. permits to allow to stay open or all night permits uh, in good standing for for long periods of time that haven't had issues, and then they're going to issue permits to us for that. So it's going to be. It's going to be, you know, super regulated. It's not going to be like every mom and pop bar is going to be open late. It's going to cause problems. And, you know, there's always these mothers against drunk driving that go in there. They're like, oh, this is going to be bad. But statistically, it's actually proven the other way. Like, like right. yeah, like yeah. they're going to have the accidents go, go down when people aren't all pushed into the street yeah. at 2 a.m. all at once, when people have time to stay in there longer, sober up a little bit. Dance like, a while. Dance a while. Yeah. yeah. And because yeah. it's people go out late and, you know, and they, they the party really gets going by 2 a.m. They're like, oh time to kick you all out in the street yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's actually what causes a lot of the problems right yeah it's uh it's great I, I remember reading a headline too that I think the uh the the one of the founders of Mothers Against Drunk Driving got caught with some insane like uh blood alcohol level driving oh man it's just fucking <laughs> hypocrisy at its finest like oh uh, well that's yeah that always happens I mean how many how many you know right-wing anti-gay politicians oh, get caught in yeah. gay sex scandals I think there's yeah. a website that has like a counter S smoking <laughs> meth and, and yeah. yeah yeah there's always a little meth involved always there's a gay that. prostitute yeah. involved yeah, yeah. Or it's, ten, yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> Which is like, do it, do it, but it's, don't don't be uh, don't be demonizing other people and putting laws in place. It's for that pretty, shit. it's pretty funny. Yeah. That, I mean, for me, I, it's not a funny subject, but it, it no, is yeah. that it's like, yeah, I'm like, oh man, it's 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 a matter of time for any of those it's guys a, get caught, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kind of you know. Uh, Uncanny Valley, kind of bizarre world type <laughs> stuff, you know. Like <laughs> at this point, it's not even bizarre. It's no, yeah. standard. Yeah, standard. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. If they're if they're out there speaking against gay rights, it's yeah. guaranteed they're going to get caught with yes. a gay prostitute smoking meth. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. Mark my words. Matter of time. Like yeah. I, I'm willing to start a betting pool on, right. on any single one of them. Yeah. That's it's easy money. It's easy money. <laughs> Oh God, that's so funny. Yeah, I mean, it's always been insane to me because you know nightclubs generally, you know, uh, whether you open at nine or ten or whatever. I mean, you have a four maybe five hour window to really make your money two nights a week. You know, at best maybe four, and you know, I mean, pushing it or to paying rent for every day. Exactly, <laughs> paying rent for every day, right? And so, I mean, I don't know if you guys do like uh, corporate events here, but that's a that's oh, we you know do, we do everything we can think exactly. of. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's a great way. We have like, we have, like you know, art battle. We have like yeah. all kinds of alternate programming. We have like you know theater shows and live music, and and it's like you have to do all this stuff all the time, yeah. and it's it's tough, you know. And, right. and like I was saying, there's a lot of competition and competition for the uh, the different DJ acts and all that stuff, and it, it's tough. And I, you know, I found that it, you know, not just for the money perspective, but if you can get people to show up to a party earlier, that's when you mm. have the best parties. Like, yeah. And it's hard. You got to trick them. I mean, you could offer them <laughs> like free drugs and hand jobs and, and, and everything, and they'll they'll still show up at midnight. Yeah, but, right. Yeah. But if you know if they're if they're free, they're not going to get in because it's sold out. Or you know, you have like free pizza earlier. There's a, if you can get people to show up at like eight or nine o'clock, then it like the party really has time to build a vibe, and, yeah. and it actually is a, a way better party, and the bar makes money, and, and that that's actually I found is the. The best, the best parties, you know, are ones you, that, that start a little earlier. That's how, yeah. like, when we do our, our, you know, our day parties, like the block parties that, you know, start at 10 in the morning. Like, yeah. they really build momentum and vibe because it's, it's people being here for a little bit longer. But, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like getting to a party and then, it, you know, getting dancing and then it's over in an hour. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really doesn't, like, allow it to really blossom into a full party. Yeah, in my opinion. yeah, I can totally see that. I mean, I, I've been 
uh, to a lot of your day parties here, and, and they're, they're fantastic. But then, yeah, I mean, the, the kind of vibe that's built from partying outside, you see your friends, it's warm, and then you come inside, and the party kind of continues, and the sun goes down, and it just, it's like another layer, and it's yeah, like, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's some of the best, uh, the best parties for sure. Yeah, I think it's a lot, it's a lot more fun. It's just having that length of time. And that's it's almost like that's like a festival style experience yeah. without having to leave town and camp. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So what what other hoops do you guys have to jump through to uh, be able to do those those day parties? You know, we're 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 really lucky with you know our location and it kind of having a really good track record when we bought the place of of these events. But we've also continued to foster that and and that's you know uh, Brad, our manager, is really good at working with the city and you know it's it's. The reason we're able to throw them is because we 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 follow we go by the rules and we we keep the event safe and we 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 work with the city always to to keep the event safer and you know work within all their rules and it's getting getting more and more expensive to do that as well that mm -hmm. you know there's more requirements they have this new law about putting fence all the way down the sidewalk so it stays open even though nobody ever walks on it and like you know <laughs> they, there's yeah and then we you know we have to pay off duty police officers but we you know it's one of those things where we have such a good track record of mm. doing these events and we're doing a lot of them. And the, at this point, you know, the, you know, the chief of police will sign off on one of our events because we're doing it because they know that we're not going to fuck it up, you uh, know, and, yeah. and it's where as opposed as a random person came in, they're like, I want to throw a block party on this street. They'd be like, go fuck yourself yeah. <laughs> or, or let, let's talk about it uh, next year and we'll start planning now, you know, yeah, but it's like, right. and that's how like we're, we're, you know, especially when we work with other party promoters and we run the bars for them and stuff like that, paper catering, it, it's, we have, because we have such a long standing, you know, uh, eight year relationship with the city and with Oakland and the other municipalities of always throwing events with no incidents with, you know, without, with, you know, mm -hmm. we always stop the alcohol right on time. We always have good safety plans. We always have the right amount of security. We already, we have flow plans for where the traffic's going to go because we have that much experience and they, you know, an experience working with the city municipalities, they trust us. And, and yeah. so it's a lot easier for us to get permits than somebody that's new or, yeah. or, you know, just cause we, we do it right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't, we don't cut corners. The track kind of record stuff. goes along. Yeah. Ways. Especially yeah. with, especially with, you know, with, with the in the city and the, the city does want block parties they do want things like that they do understand the value of that it still gets more and more expensive all the time yeah. <laughs> but but they they you know they realize that that is one of the reasons that people live in san francisco and they're, they're 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 really trying to protect like these fairs but same thing like howard street fair i think that was probably their last year uh you uh, think so i've heard that i don't know for sure oh, yeah but but yeah. yeah and there's you know there's other you know big big festivals like that especially the ones that you know that are by donation and it's like same kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I was at a meeting with a bunch of the street fair people and like the Folsom street fair guys and all these guys are like, we literally are losing money. You know, yeah. it's like, we have these sponsors that try and make up for it, but it's like, you know, the city costs just go up and up and up and up. And, you know, and it's crazy too. Like, you know, you think about like a venue, like say like Fort Mason, Fort Mason is federal property right. and they charge like 60 grand to throw an event there. Like yeah. how, <laughs> what, what, where's that money going? You right. know what I mean? Like, and who decides that? Is that a committee? Can I vote on that? Right. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's really weird. It's really crazy. Like, well, that's the market rate right? because you know, it's corporate. It's like, what are you talking about? This is a fucking public park. Yeah. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you made that right up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, why is it so expensive? What do you, do what you, do you think, Bill? Oh, 60 grand. You guys yeah. don't have rent to pay. It's right, a federal, yeah. federal yeah. property. <laughs> was that 60 grand for one day? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, and that's why, nice that's why it's so hard and, and, you know, to do these large style events. And, and, and it sucks too because we really want to do like more community involvement. We want to mm. do like wine and cheese mixers and all these other like fancy style events. We can't. It's just too expensive. The, it won't, the money won't. It, it won't work. Like right. I, I want to throw like you know classy, fancy, like fun for the whole family sell events, but we will literally lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. You right. know, it's like right. we have to throw these, you know, bigger artists, dance music ones, and and that's that. That's what's actually going to make the money. And it, and it sucks mm. that you know these other style events. We we there's not a we can't make them profitable because of all the costs involved. Yeah. Right. Like a little bit more shame. like a like a oyster fest or or something. Yeah, like that. I I, yeah. I I mean those the only reason those events even happen is because of giant corporate sponsors and, uh, and yeah. I they don't think those guys I don't know those guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you meet some, let me yeah know. yeah. Right. If you're, you're watching, yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. watching corporate yeah. sponsors, come give us some money to give people oysters in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> I will be there. I fucking love oysters. Yeah. Do you love? Yeah. But have you been to oyster fest? It's not very fun. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> no, it's, not. it's a shame. I mean, yeah. it's like you pay. It's like you pay a shitload of money wait in line and then get to wait in line again to pay mm -hmm. too much money for oysters. I'm like, how is this a 
fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like great America. So you yeah. pay a lot of money to wait in line. Like, <laughs> you wait in line to pay money to wait yeah. in line to pay more money. Right, yeah. And then, and then, the they, and then they throw three for corporation on. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's yeah. Like out of, and everybody's like, who is that? <laughs> These are Disney stars. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. It's oh, weird. It's yeah. great. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about Pawn Shop because uh, I, I just wanted to talk to – I know it's kind of uh, – I don't know if that's your first restaurant you've, you've uh Well, yes, like all, all of – me and my business partners, we all kind of had a restaurant background, and we all decided we never wanted to do food again. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, and we're like, we're just doing bars. Yeah, yeah. And we did that for a long time, but then it was just, you know, it was the location. It's connected to Monarch. We have these other mm-hmm. partners. They're kind of our restaurant operators, and it, it made sense, you know. Yeah. Um, all of us, you know, coming from me being, I was a pastry chef for eight years. I cooked for Marco Pierre White in London and I cooked, you know, with Eric Hoffinger. Like we opened nine different restaurants in San Francisco and it was, just, it was just too much fucking work, too much, you know, not enough money. And even, even Pawn Shop, Pawn Shop's like one of the busiest restaurants in the city. And, you know, it's, we're still struggling to make it profitable mm-hmm. on a, on a monthly basis because of, like I was saying, it's a cost are just so high here. Right. And it sucks because if, uh, if we were in another market, we'd be fucking rich. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's just because this city, the costs are, you know, and the, the landlords, like the rent they're charging and, you know, the payroll taxes and yeah. the, the costs of, you know, ingredients and all that stuff. Everything is just so much astronomically higher here. And you can charge more, but it's not, it's not actually proportional. Not that much more. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, $16 for a burger, you know, if you're paying for that, it seems like a lot, but it's like, you know, you have to charge that. Otherwise you can't have this, this, yeah. this place you know what I mean it's <laughs> yeah. crazy yeah and it is it is cool that you know that the, you know generally it more and more I'm realizing like a lot of the San Francisco customers they they don't care about price as much as they used to they're not right. you know all the thrifty people have moved to Oakland yeah right <laughs> but still at the same time it, it it is tough it's really tough yeah and finding that sweet spot of where things should be priced you know uh at, to where it's not gonna scare people away but it's mm-hmm. still yeah mm-hmm. and yeah, it's it's that's the really not fun side. That plunging toilets and controlling costs <laughs> is like the real the glamorous side to to nightclub and restaurant ownership. Right, yeah. <laughs> People don't see. Yeah. <laughs> Spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> Tons of spreadsheets. Not, it's not all it's not all fun. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I take <laughs> Oh yeah, it, uh, that was my famous quote when we yeah. first opened. I'm like, well, I was I can't remember it was like our like our I think it was our like it's like our first year open and we had like poolside, not poolside, it was a uh, uh, pillow talk was playing their first live show ever wow. at Monarch and the place is like slammed. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but being in a basement, you always have issues with your septic because everything has to go into a big tank and get ground up and then pumped up to the sewer. Oof. So it's always problems. And literally like there's like poor plumbers that have to physically go in there once a year. Oh my and God. And bog of eternal stench. But yeah, I'm in there <laughs> and there's like, me and like two other barbacks like plunging the toilets there's like shit water all over the floor and it's like heading to the dance floor and I was like I look at my friend Steve and I'm like I thought owning a nightclub would be all cocaine and blowjobs I'm like it's all shit and tampons that's like my favorite quote and spreadsheets yeah, yeah. I, I hadn't gotten to that yet yeah. but yeah it was <laughs> there's, shit and tampons yeah there's, there's really uh, there's fun days and there's really not fun days when absolutely. like the power's going out and like oh man <laughs> yeah Probably still better than a regular nine to five, I would imagine. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes yeah. yeah. We work, we work the other nine to five. But no, yeah, I mean the yeah. truth is, like, if we actually added up the amount of work I do, I probably get paid like a dollar an hour. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, at least I'll have nothing to show for it in ten years or so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is the American dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. So um, I, I take it you guys probably use the, the, the same designer for – so I guess I, I should explain it to people that might not uh, have, have been to uh, the pawn shop. But like uh, Michael was saying, it's you walk in and it's kind of a, a small – I mean, from the outside, it, it, for all intents and purposes, it looks like the entrance to a pawn shop, which is, I think is fantastic. And then you go in and it's this small kind of large walk-in closet style of an of a entrance, you know, blocked off. And there's tchotchkes and knickknacks and stuff. And then off to the right, you've got a, a – a, a hostess and you know when i went you know you talked to the hostess and i think you either need to bring so a it's a, the pawn master yeah the so we, master, we yeah. like one of the things we we i mean i've been to a lot of secret passageway entrance places all over the world mm-hmm. and one of the things we really wanted to do differently is have a real experience when you walked in so yeah, yeah. We, we we have a team of different like character theater actors that are like you know that are different walks of life and they have their own developed characters like our our, our main one that's like the head is, uh, his name is Jerome Joyce. He's like a world champion freestyle rapper from Detroit. 
And wow. he has this character called Pawn Shop Jerry. And he has his own Instagram and he like talks in a different accent. And so they have a whole like kind of interaction, like kind of banter and yeah. play, you know. And it depends. Like some people walk in and you can tell they're hangry and they just want to get in and he gets them really quick. Some people he'll be up there fucking around with them for 30 minutes. Yeah. You never you never know what you're gonna get. And it, right. it's it's a really it's it's a lot different than I've seen a lot of other places. They're like, oh blah, 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 here you go. And it's like yeah. and for we we try and make that whole thing a really interactive experience. It's fun mm -hmm. and 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 kind of creative and sometimes they have to go wait and monarch and come back but yeah so then you go through the secret passageway and our, our design theme there we actually didn't use the same designer uh, oh. we use we actually we, we used a girl named Jessie Roadkill that used to work at One Hat One Hand uh, mm -hmm. and, and she kind of started her own agency uh, uh, and then she, she was the head designer on that uh, with a kind of a team of people but yeah our theme there we wanted to go with something different again that we that wasn't in the city at all mm -hmm. so we went for this kind of uh, Cuban courtyard like indoor outdoor vibe basically was our kind of theme behind that yeah because you know I, I've been a fan and I just love that old kind of crumbling deco building like weird look and it was yeah. just something that, that hadn't been done right uh, I could totally <laughs> tell the Cuban vibe like right yeah. off the bat yeah, yeah people yeah people get it pretty quick usually like oh yeah. and then we have we originally wanted to do this like projected like cloud thing on the ceiling, but we kind of you know ran out of money for that. <laughs> but it, like, you know, it's got the outdoor walls, the blue ceiling, and like vines, and like. But yeah, same thing. It's you know it's, uh, set designers and working with set designers to to do interior design. I I really like because the one thing they do a lot differently than a typical like building crew is they they pre build uh, ninety nine percent of the stuff off site. Oh wow! Uh, so like if you look around here, like this entire piece was built in a warehouse uh, in Hunter's Point. And wow. then it was bought here and installed. Wow. Uh, and same thing with like these huge mirrors over here and all this stuff. So they, you know, so that the actual build times are, are, are infinitely shorter mm. and, 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 and it's more cost effective and just a, you know, kind of a better way to do stuff as right. opposed to them being there. You know, so it's just like, because they're used to, they're used to building stuff for movie sets or for trade shows and shit like that. So yep. they have to like have it all done and just go poof and throw it out. Yeah. So a lot of times while we're going through that red tape and we're mm -hmm. waiting for permits and stuff, this stuff can actually be being, being, being built somewhere else and then, and then installed very quickly. Yeah. Like yeah. Pawn Shop took us, uh, uh, you know, uh, almost two years open because like we are saying, we were building a kitchen from scratch and waiting for mm -hmm. permits and anyway, like it, it's, yeah, everywhere in San Francisco, anybody, anytime you're trying to build anything from scratch, you're, you're screwed. Right. Uh, you know, here in Monarch, our build times were a lot shorter because it was, you know, cosmetic exchange or it, it, cosmetic, uh, remember this term, uh, cosmetic changes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, that's, yeah, that's the term. Uh, and like I was saying, like the stuff that's in here was built offsite and installed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have to uh, go through the same regulatory process for something that's just being installed as opposed to, to physically built here. You know? Interesting. Yeah. Like, so, oh, interesting. So there's different regulations if you're building it in the building and then installing it versus just popping it up. Yeah, cuz yeah. this is this is a it's a faux piece that's just mm. attached to a wall as opposed to a new wall. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean it seems kind of better all around. I mean I suppose unless you need some some crazy intricate thing, but I mean even these are pretty intricate, you know, yeah, for just being, Well, you, you know, actually can build a lot more intricately if you have uh, large amounts of time somewhere else. Yeah, and, right. And cuz that's actually like, you know, one of the biggest cost things when you're building out of place is the time closed and the time paying rent when you're not making income and all that stuff. It, mm. It's, mm -hmm. that's one of the biggest, you know, barriers to entry is that. And uh, yeah. yeah, like I was saying right. with them, making it take longer. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah. I think, I mean, I think the results really fun and people, people seem to like it. Not, like, it, not everybody likes it, but you know, whatever. I feel like you guys <laughs> should have a, uh, a great Gatsby themed party. That'd be fun. Um, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because people, people are like, they, they just associate that movie with Art Deco and mm. they don't actually like know what Art Deco is. It's kind of like, oh, yeah. that's I'm how you separate the it. simple people. They're like, <laughs> yeah. they're like, oh, it's Gatsby themed. I'm like, oh God, it's <laughs> one movie that happens. To <laughs> that was totally me. I'm totally, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're now, you're yeah. now a basic, a basic, a basic bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it. Uh, I think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, De definitely sets it uh, apart from from pretty much anywhere else in the city. Well, and that was yeah. our that was our idea when we were we were taking we we're doing this place. We're like, you know, the, we we think that the climate in San Francisco is changing. The customers changing. They're a little bit more evolved and upscale like we didn't want to just do like a dirty warehouse style club which yeah. probably would have been more cost effective but we're like you know we think that you know the city's changing a little bit like the you know the newer customers are a little bit more discerning they mm -hmm. want to you know they want something to, to not be crazy polished like Disneyland but they want it to feel a little nicer yeah. and, and and we have you know there's a lot of 
there's a lot of you know different events that that always do their event here because they they appreciate it like that right. you know and we even had we had the uh, uh, the San Francisco Symphony did an event here and we have wow. like you know we have all we have all kinds of stuff that you would wouldn't expect like Cirque du Soleil did an event here and wow. and, and like things that that you know if we had a dirty warehouse style club they probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah. absolutely yeah. yeah well because it would i mean if they did want to do something themed their way it would take so much to like you know retrofit the room and all that yeah. sort of thing yeah and it's weird though because like you know private event planners sometimes they want a really empty room like they prefer like a mezzanine type room slate. because yeah. they can upcharge their client to bring in a bunch of bullshit <laughs> as opposed <laughs> but when you're working directly with uh with a company they want a place that's totally turnkey <laughs> it's yeah. pretty funny but the event planners that's how they make their money is middle right. manning like oh we need to have up lights and plants mm -hmm. and they they cost this much when yeah. they really don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah right totally it's a whole game that's a whole corporate event side of things oh, but man. yeah yeah <laughs> that's awesome uh let me see let me uh i think we worked through a um uh, a bunch of these um yeah, paper with pencil wow, yeah i, I know that, no yeah. my my uh, once i started doing this i realized how dog shit my handwriting had become oh my it's, handwriting my hands is are gone. atrophied yeah exactly I literally i can barely write my name anymore <laughs> at this point <laughs> the amount of times that i write and then i have to like erase and redo it i'm like what the <laughs> fuck is uh, but it, it does help because I use my phone for streaming. Uh, and, yeah. and a lot of times, too, like there's something to be said for writing it. I mean, it does, like, if you put it in your phone You're or whatever. dyslexic like me, it's yeah. not, not, there's nothing to be said for writing <laughs> it. It's not going <laughs> to yeah. work out for anybody. Right, yeah. God forbid you're dyslexic and left-handed. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, let's see. Um, got through all of those. Um Oh yeah, I wanted to ask about the. So this is a quick one that we 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 already touched on the pawn shop. But what's uh so there is there a, a secret doorway to Monarch? I remember I I think I read about that online. Yeah, we um it's it's generally for staff to go through um mm -hmm. and for us to bring food over to to Monarch uh, nice. for happy hour because we have a we now have a food happy hour at Monarch. We actually are kind of rebranding Monarch's bar uh, as the bar at Monarch. Oh. Uh, yeah, because like, there's a lot of people that come there and realize it's a nightclub on the weekends. They don't realize that it's also a really fun bar all week long. Yeah. So we have like a new logo. And we're launching this whole uh, like happy hour food program, which yep. the kitchen at the Pond Cop makes. And so... Any day of the week you, during happy hour, um, you can order from a, like a whole really amazing menu mm -hmm. that's different than the pawn shop menu, and that food is brought over through, through the secret passageway. Interesting. I think you, you hit the nail on the head because I, I, I've been to Monarch you know, countless times, and, I, and I'm in my head, it's always the, the, the lower half of it. But then you walk in, you're like, wow, this whole upstairs bar is like really cool. Yeah, and there's a whole, there's a whole, there's a whole like contingent of people that don't go to the nightclub and yeah. just come to the bar. And generally, it's... it's 99% of the time, it's always free to get in upstairs. There yeah. are We do, like, you know, charity events or certain bigger events later on the weekend. You know, we charge at the front door, but it's, it's pretty rare. So mm -hmm. generally, always for happy hour, you can always just walk in there. There's a free photo booth. There's amazing craft cocktails. And now yeah. there's, a, there's a food menu. Nice. And that, that was, we were trying to build happy hours back in the day. We had this thing called Amazing Hour. We'd always have circus formers. And we, we didn't, we've realized over time that it's like, people are hungry after work. So if you don't have some sort of food there, they like freak out. Um, right. And we, we, we've had a lot of success with our Taco Tuesday there, which is, mm -hmm. in my opinion, the best Taco Tuesday in the city. We have amazing tacos for $2. And people come in, they're like, these are so good. Uh, I, how did I not know about this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I found like it, bar people are, are they're not, it's, it's really weird. Like, you know, m like music centric nightclub people, they, they'll like go out and find different places because they're mm -hmm. like looking for these artists. But like bar people like take a while to find stuff or they like, you know, it's more like neighborhood based mm -hmm. Like that, but I think you know this new launch of uh, the bar at Monarch's gonna really uh, help our like weekday bar business with the food and everything. So yeah, come, nice. come and try it. Yeah, absolutely. We yeah, also I, have I a love new, a Taco Tuesday. Uh, we also have a new uh, a party I just launched called uh, Disco House Brunch. Oh yeah, it's, it's a monthly now. It's gonna become a weekly. Uh, the next one's on the fifteenth of what month is it? Uh, August. Yeah, the 15th of uh, September. September. Yeah. yeah, sorry. I'm really bad with my I'm right there with you. Yeah, uh, so the 15th of September, and it's, you know, we have a bunch of residents, and we bring in, like, one guest, but uh, we do this whole, like, disco theme, and we pipe the sound between Pawn Shop and Monarch. So you come in through the Pawn Shop, and if you want to go dance, you go over to Monarch. If you want to, like, sit and eat, you go to Pawn Shop, and people wow. kind of go back and forth, and it, it's really fun. The last one was crazy. We kind of want to, and it's always free, uh, and, and basically, and the brunch menu is amazing. And so we're trying to, like, I think we're going to turn into a weekly, I want to really, like, like, I don't know if you've been around long enough, but we kind of want to rebuild that whole like crazy brunch party vibe they used to have at Lime and the Castro. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And it, it, the last, the last two have been really amazing. So, and everybody's super excited. All these, all these big DJs are hitting me up. They're like, "Oh, I want to come play brunch." I'm like, <laughs> "All right, you know, you don't get paid, you just get food, right?" right yeah. <laughs> no, but it, it's actually really fun, and yeah. people like everybody plays like crazy disco music. Yeah. And I, I think, I think it's, it's already really taken off. But I think once we 
make it a weekly. It's going to be yeah. once everybody once the marina finds out there's a party brunch every every Sunday. I think it'll be really well, good. San Francisco <laughs> loves their day parties and they love their brunch. And it's it, there's no real good brunch party right now, and I no. think the city really needs that. And yeah. you know, my DJ name is Brunch Life, so right. I'm the guy to do You're it. You're the guy to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, and we all, all the whole staff wears like disco costumes and yeah. big wig, you know, big afros and shit. It's oh, that's fun. great! I love yeah. it. I, lo- I love a themed party. Yeah, you got to come yeah. to the next one. Absolutely. Um, so, what about? Uh, do you have any sort of projects? I, 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 I've seen uh, photos of you at uh, Burning Man. Do you have any projects or you hand anything at Burning Man? Um, Burning Man this year, I'm gonna camp with Pink Mammoth. Just something new. I like to mm-hmm. be polycamperous and try different spots. Polycamperous. Yeah, no, I, I like that. to meet new people. You know, <laughs> like some people great. always like go with their same camp, and I, yeah. there's some set at that. But for me, it's like people are like, "Why don't you camp with Disco Nights?" That's your business partner's camp. I'm like, I hang out with those guys all the time. I want to, right. I want to go meet some new people, meet a new yeah. crew. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm, you know, doing some big DJ gigs. Like uh, me and Tobin are playing uh, Celtic Chaos. I think on Tuesday before <laughs> uh, Gorgon City, nice. and then we're playing. Uh, we're gonna do a, a set on uh, Dusty Rhino with uh, Mikey Lyon, and then, uh, and then I'm helping out with this weird art project that I don't understand. Something about a deprivation tank or something i don't know i'm waiting for an email about it <laughs> and then and then we're, we're also throwing a party uh with the depressurization chamber oh yeah. uh we're doing uh the monday party at the sands mm-hmm. and that's uh it's part of my like i have this uh theme party called uh solid gold jacuzzi so it's nice. a whole gold theme party we used to do the biggest float in the love parade i don't know if you're around for that sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like a yeah. whole like we'd have like 120 people airbrush and gold makeup and we've kind of revitalized oh, I remember saying that yeah yeah, yeah yeah we kind of revitalized that brand yeah. we've been doing like uh you know stages like for how weird and throwing parties so uh we're gonna do a solid gold jacuzzi pool party nice. uh, on monday at the sands um and that's it's really fun because you know they give us these crazy sweets and you're all dirty from burning man you get to oh, go man. like wash off and be in a pool <laughs> it's, oh, it's, it's, it's a really nice way to come home as opposed to straight home yeah, absolutely yeah. yeah yeah this is uh my gonna be my first year at uh, burning man i've done many many festivals over the years but um, are you gonna do your podcast in burning man you know what uh it's tempting. It's tempting. Yeah. I don't. I don't have anything lined up. But the only thing that, that I shy away from is, is, uh, as you can imagine, all this stuff is is pretty expensive, and I mm. worry about the the playa dust because Just I know it in it's Tupperware. Put it in Tupperware. Yeah, right. Or plastic anywhere. bags. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I would actually really like to. If I don't do it this year, I'll definitely do it next you can year. Also, you could also like bring all your stuff and do it from like inside an art car or like inside sure. somewhere yeah. so you don't have to bring your shit outside. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I could even, you know what I could do is I could just do an audio recorder in my phone. Yeah. That's a good idea. There you and go. I'll sync the two up. Oh, there man. There you go. There oh, you go. Man. Yeah. I'm loving yeah. it. I'm loving it. I'll do it. I'll, uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll probably have to be impromptu, you know, kind of like, hey, let's just do this now, you know, because, you know, trying to line stuff up at Burning Man's a little, or any festival is a little, little. Burning uh, Man's hairy. even more. Yeah. I think I, yeah. that was like two years ago. Me and Lee Reynolds were playing on the Dusty Rhino. We couldn't find it for like 24 hours. So we literally showed up. 24 hours, like the next day, the same time. And they're like, we're like, we're here. They're like, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> 24 hours late. You on, made it. Yeah. Right on time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Burning man time, man. Yeah, that's, that's pretty great. funny. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, uh, um, I've uh, serviced the, uh, the robot heart uh, sound system and, and car uh, a whole bunch. Um, and I know Pascal and all those that guys. that transmission that's busted. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. Or maybe the sound system on the fly if anything goes uh, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm staying with Iceberg Cowboys. Uh, so it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. I got a, a do good... Do they actually uh, have ice there? Or is it like, are they robots? Like ice pirates? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we do a barbecue. Oh, uh, we good. do have a good amount of ice. Yeah. You know, wait, I think I went to that barbecue. They're like serving sausages and stuff. Yeah. I, I randomly yeah. went there <laughs> a couple years ago. Yeah. We were riding our one. bikes there. There was a bunch of sausages. That yeah. was dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll have to... Uh, maybe we can link up while we're out there and, and oh, uh, sausage and, link up yeah. nice <laughs> hey you took it there <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun that sounds fun yeah um cool well um let's see what are we at we're about uh, yeah we're about an hour here let me see if there's any um is there uh is there any uh any any crazy experiences like dj experiences experiences here that you can share with us or think oh of yeah i, got, I got a pretty good one yeah so <laughs> me and tobin got arrested in thailand on a boat holy cow yeah it was pretty good so we, we went out there uh, uh to play this uh, music festival called the five senses festival and we were like super stoked they like you know put the, put us as headliners they're gonna let us close out one of the stages like play last as long as you want and then, like, I, we were getting over there, and the, the festival producers are friends of ours, uh, this guy Adam, and he's like, hey, we're having all these problems with the, 
local police, like, you know, we paid them off, but now these other police are in town and they're like telling us we can't do our new festival ground. So we've switched everything. Now we're doing a, a bunch of boat parties and this big club party and everybody's still playing and we're mm -hmm. just switching everything around. You guys are going to play on a boat. And we're like, all right, sure. Well, I mean, that sounds fun. I don't play on a boat, you know, <laughs> whatever. I'm not, you know, we're, we weren't stressed about it. We're in Thailand having a great time. So we, we, we go out there the first day and we hang out with like the uh, DJ Met guys and just have a great time on the first day, boat party day. And the second day we go and we're like wearing these like crazy like matching sequin tops like we're, and cowboy boots. We're like super outrageous looking. And we're having a great time, you know, all day on this boat. And I think we're, not, we're supposed to play in like another hour or two. And all of a sudden I look over and there's this like giant speedboat like covered in cops like filming us. <laughs> covered like, in That's cops. fucking weird. <laughs> So we're downstairs and like, you know, this, the boat, boat pulls over, this other boat pulls up and like, you know, all these, you know, and, and cops in, you know, in other countries are pretty intimidating. They're like straight up have machine guns and <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, like, they're, they're military <laughs> cops. Yeah. And they're like, they're, they're super tight uniforms and like right. the hundred degree heat. But yeah, so they, there's all these like Thai police on there and like one of the, uh, the boat captains comes up, comes up to me and told me they're like, they want to speak to you upstairs right now. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, all right. And I'm like, God, this, this is sketch. Yeah. <laughs> so we go up there, and the guy's like, are you the DJ uh, to Tobin? He's like, yeah, we're, we're DJs. Like, and they're like, well, how much are you getting paid to DJ? And we're like, oh, no, no, we're just playing for free. We, we list love music, and you know, Adam's a friend of ours. So like, we're, we're not getting paid. Because right. you know, obviously, we're like, they're like wondering if we had visas or something. Yeah, so we're yeah. like, no, no, no. <laughs> And here's where it gets weird. Like, yeah. we just kept saying that. And then they're like, so basically, they're shutting the party down and they're going to go back to port, but it's like, you know, two hours. You know, we're way out in the fucking middle of nowhere. And they're like, well, they, they're like, play music, play music right now, but play, play, play three songs, play them, play them quiet. And they're like, <laughs> ordered us to DJ. We're like, what the fuck? I'm like, I'm like, kind of nervous at this one. I'm like, what the fuck is happening to right. him? And so we go over there and like start setting up our NPC live and like yeah. Tobin starts playing and we're like, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and so we start playing and then they're like, and we, you know, we play like a track or two and they're like, and so we start playing and we like end up like literally DJing for two hours and get a whole raging party going. And we like literally have video of the cops like <laughs> dancing with us and shit. <laughs> so we, wow. Yeah, I'll show you some pictures <laughs> yeah, after this. And absolutely. We're like, yeah, we're wearing these sequin outfits. So they just assume we're the DJs because we were dressed the craziest. That's right. <laughs> so we get back. And they literally take everybody in the boat and they take everybody off one by one and check the manifest and everything. We're like, ah, oh, fine, we're fucking out of here. And they're like, you two and you to like add on the party promoter. Like, you guys have to go in the van and to go talk at the station. And we're like, oh man. And then the the uh, the guy, one of the, the main chief police guys, like, it's fine, it's fine. You know, it's not you're not going to be in trouble. So we go to the police station. <laughs> And they don't actually take us inside. They like hold us outside and we're there for like six fucking hours. <laughs> it was getting, oh my uh, God. and I was like, oh man, Adam's like, just don't say anything. Wait for my fucking lawyer to get here. And we're like, all right, all right. Where you know, and they kept, they kept, they took Tobin in there and they kept questioning him. Like how much you get paid? Are you a DJ and all stuff? Oh, and then it was more complicated. They had to take us to go get our passports from the scooter place. Holy and they kept shit. asking us different ways, like how we were getting paid and all stuff. We're like, yeah. no, no, we just love music. Man. <laughs> we're just, they're getting really frustrated. They had a translator for us, oh all this God. stuff. And they were basically trying to get us to admit that we took money to DJ in a foreign country so right. they could give us a ticket for yeah. it. Yeah. And then also like incriminate Adam, the party promoter. Oh my so we God. just kept like keeping our story. And we're there forever. And eventually, like, I, I get really, like, low blood sugar. And I started getting, like, hangry. I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm like, I'm going to go in there and cause a fucking trouble so we can get the fuck out of here. And I go in there and I'm like, what's your badge number? Like, I'm calling the embassy. Like, to start freaking the fuck out a little bit. Like, I was being nice. But I was yeah. like, you know, I need, I, you know what? I, are, am I being charged with a crime? Like, I want to leave. Like, yeah. and like, they, and like, I'm like, I've been held here for six hours without food or water. And like, Literally, then like five minutes, they come out and bring us food, and then they're like, <laughs> "Okay, you guys can go." <laughs> I'm like, "Fuck!" But then we like didn't have our phones or anything because we got rid of. I would like just gave our friends our shit because I'm like, I don't know, I'm yeah. going to jail. I don't want to have right. fucking money or a phone or. You know, like, I don't know. It seemed like a good idea, so we were like miles from anywhere. So then me and Tobin are like literally walking in the middle of nowhere, like in sequin <laughs> tops and cowboy boots and little booty shorts, and it's like dark out. Holy shit! And then we get back to the fucking place where everybody's at, where the party's supposed to be, which has been shut down. And literally all these DJs like the <laughs> like cheering, they had champagne for us, like free silky thunder. <laughs> Like it was hilarious. Like I, we were like fucking heroes. Wow! Because like, all the other DJs were like, oh, that could have been us. And yeah. like, they're like, what happened? Are you guys okay? And like, 
But it was funny because we actually got to play the last set of the whole festival. Like, oh like, like Francesco Lombardo, Beirut, like none of these huge days even got to play. Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> it was shit. pretty fucking cool. It was pretty random. And then wow. we, felt, we felt so bad. So my buddy Adam was throwing the festival, like just having a kid. Mm-hmm. He like, you know, ended up having to go to Bangkok and pay all these fines and refund all the tickets. And we, we felt so bad. We like donated our entire fee and everything. And he was so stoked. And so he's actually now, he just started a new project, or this thing called Project Loud, which is like the biggest new club in London. He's going to fly us out to play out there. Wow. Which has uh, the guy that made the sound system for DC10 design the sound system. They actually had their opening night last Friday. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, so really, he's, like, he's like, I owe you guys. You fucking <laughs> went to jail with me. I'm going to fly you out to London to play at this new club. That's amazing. Yeah, super wow. random. <laughs> wow. I, the mental image of you guys walking around Thailand in sequins oh, outfits. in the middle and of Calib- fucking <laughs> 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 We finally got a cab <laughs> Take us, like, I mean, just as an American, you stand out like a sore thumb, and then also with oh, the they whole, they think it's hilarious. I mean, they yeah. you know like they, people wear crazy shit in Thailand because there's all the lady boys. And they, they, they 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 think it's fucking right. right. <laughs> yeah, they're all about it. They don't judge there. They think it's funny as hell. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean though. I uh, I took a trip to uh, Peru many years ago, and I just had I had this little you know backpack sized DJ controller, um, and I was just gonna play a friend's party out there in Peru. And uh, they're, you know, customs, well, going through customs, it's like they have this kind of archway with like a red and a green light on it. And you walk through and, you know, Peruvian after Peruvian walk through and it's like green light, green light. And of course me, big six foot like gringo, like walks through and it's like red light. And I'm like, oh, fucking <laughs> uh, course, ca- here we go. Cavity search time. Yeah, yeah, yeah here yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I go into the little customs thing and it was the same thing. They're looking through my bag and they're like, this is uh, professional DJ equipment. And I'm like, <laughs> You're like uh, obviously what not. What do you mean? Like, how do you know? And they're like, well, we have a list of professional DJ equipment and this is on it. And I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, and they're like, where are you playing? And I was like, I'm just going to go play a, a party with my friends. And they're like, well, you know, we have to, uh, we have to charge a tax on this because it's professional DJ equipment. Oh. I was like, Oh, fucking Christ. All right. What do you, what do you need? How much do you need? <laughs> it was like, it was probably for them. It was probably a lot. It was probably like a hundred bucks or hundred fifty. for me. I mean, you know, it, the exchange rate, it was probably like 20 bucks. So I'm like, fuck you take it. You know well, what I mean? You got like, to keep your professional DJ. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. My, my $60 DJ controller, whatever, you know, luckily we, we, oh. I think we, we did bring the NBC, <laughs> but we didn't have, we didn't have, yeah, that probably wasn't on the list. Right. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, we'll tour with those. <laughs> there That's, was no list. They're just, yeah, you know. exactly. This is on our list of you pay us now. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Maybe we'll get a visa uh, next time. I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. That's a good story, though. It's yeah. a fucking a free good story. silky thunder. Right. Free silky thunder. Yeah. <laughs> like free Tibet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, um, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, it's uh, been man. a great yeah. episode. Yeah. Great chat with you. Uh, yeah, we'll have to do this again. I feel like uh, you you have a lot to talk about, and uh, you know. I've had a blast uh, for the past yeah, uh, <laughs> hour and 17 minutes. Woo. Um, so, yeah, this has been uh, Micah Burns, and we're at uh, Great Northern. Uh, he also uh, co-owns uh, Monarch and the what, the catering company. Uh, Monarch Beverage Catering Monarch and, and Beverage then the catering Pawn Shop. And the Pawn Shop. Yeah, we're doing a so, new place, but it's secret. Yeah, okay. All right, to, to be <laughs> like, continued. Yeah, to be continued. Right, we'll yeah. talk about that one later. All right. Um, so if you're in the area uh, in San Francisco, definitely check those out. And uh, if you're interested in catering, def- definitely Google them. Uh, this has been episode number 29 with Micah Burns, and uh, this is the voice of electronic music. Uh, I'm Scott Brio. If you want to check out our other uh, episodes, you can basically just Google it. We're on all the major streaming platforms, Spotify, SoundCloud, all that. Uh, so we will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Woo-hoo. Peace out. <laughs> Good talking to you, buddy. Yeah.